One thing I like to do is keep a camp journal. Just document every day a little bit about all the things I do when I come to camp, when I get here, the temperature, whatnot. So years down the road, I can look back and read what I was doing at certain times, what projects. And one of the other things I'm gonna do is my cabin here. I got such a good deal on it because I had some issues with the foundation piers. The camp's kinda frost heaved a little bit and kind of shifted so I sunk an anchor in the ground in the fall and I got some cables and I'm going to try to jack it back and get it back straight and then this summer I'll try to dig out some of the broken piers and replace them with some new ones so like I was talking about with the camp you can see with your naked eye how much this pier right here is is leaning We'll string it after and show you. And the one thing I can't believe when they poured this, they didn't put any rebar with that much concrete sticking out of the ground. I would have never done concrete sticking up that far. I would have stopped it and ran posts. But you can see right there, that pier snapped right off. So I'll wind up digging that one out. Now come out of the ground. And I'll have a piece of threaded rod and then I'll get an 8x8 beam and stick the beam up to the floor. The old timer told me string don't lie. So if you look down that string you can see how far out that pier is. Once I fix those piers, the biggest thing is getting some skirting around it. Keep the wind and cold out. So hopefully the frost doesn't go as deep. Maybe I can find some old construction frost blankets that are ripped and cheap money. And I can lay them all over the ground to help keep the ground from letting the frost run too deep during the winter. Jacked on those cables and cranked them up. I was able to move it a little bit. Not much to be very significant. But... Looking at it, I think what I'm gonna wind up doing, so I'll crib this back corner, jack it up. I'm gonna dig down beside that pier and I'm gonna move it over till it's straight. Once I get that one done, I'll just slowly do each one. So I brought up a load of posts, old telephone poles that I'm gonna use to build my outdoor shed and shower so we just get into camp ran real quick to get some supplies start tackling tackling the foundation i brought some of that pipe from the main camp here to dig a trench underneath and help drain water out from under in the spring when the snow melts water runs right down through so dig it down i'll stone it and put it in there and get some of the water out but we're going to work on replacing some of these piers i'll obviously be able to do this one there ain't nothing holding it there it's just wiggling away so i don't have to worry about cribbing it up I just dig that one out, pull it out, pour it, put a post in it. It's already five o'clock now, so ain't gonna get too involved with that. Instead, I think I'll jump on the mower and start mowing. One other project that I gotta do. This window gasket let go and the window slid down this winter. And I had water come in and of course the uh, particle board got wet like a sponge. Why they use that stuff is beyond me, it's crap. So I cut this up, pretty much the wood's good back into here. It was just this rot hole, so 
I'm gonna cut it out, patch it in. All right, as you can see, I cribbed it, got the jack. Cribbed the edge jack. String don't lie, that baby's leaning. I didn't want to undermine, dig down. I don't know how deep these piers go in the ground. So I'm gonna dig down beside this. I didn't want to do it without supporting it. Well, I dug down, found the issue. Snapped right off the bird's foot. They didn't go down in the ground far enough. And the frost jacked it, snapped. They should have went at least five and a half feet Looks like they went down about four. I broke off. Uh, so I'm gonna have to dig this one out. Pour a new one. So you gotta get pretty creative on how you're gonna get. strap around that as you can see I don't know it's all deformed it's oval shaped I don't know if they dug them all in line and back filled them like a trench or when they did they like crushed the crow's feet then you can see they didn't even vibrate it when they filled it with concrete to get the whole thing full yeah, and that's just crappy concrete. But here's the pier itself. It kept its round shape, so what ended up happening is it blew out on the sides, which the frost got underneath that lip, picked up on it, and it sheared off because there's no rebar in it to hold it for shear strength. I'm sure it's not required by code, but for peace of mind, I would have put it in there. But I got to dig down the rest of the way and set my sauna tube, and I, I got rebar to stick in there. about one more bag of concrete to put in and then uh, should be topped off then I'll have to wait for it to firm up to put the anchor bolt in but put six pieces of rebar 
down in there. It's soupy right now. All right, I'll mix the last bag and uh, then I'll wait for it to set up a little bit and I'll put the anchor bolt in. Well, we got that one setting up. So I got a little bit of work ahead of me to replace some of these. The other piece is just barely a foot down and I'm sure it's only about another three feet in from there. All right, so last night I pulled out this pier, dragged it out of the way. You can see it sheared off. Why you'd pour concrete out of the ground that far without, you can see I got some rebar. Leaned against the air, just throw a couple sticks of rebar in it for shear strength. I don't know if the people did it themselves or one of the contractors that they hired did it. But that's the reason why I got such a good deal on this place. It had some foundation issues. You know, you can see this. This one here got frost jacked. Pushed that way. That one's pushed the other way. We dug out dug down anyway there's the uh, bottom of the crow's foot the plastic thing so just to show you dirt's right about here on the handle for the ground level so it's right about where that little mark is on there so we'll get a tape measure and we'll measure that. All right, it was in the ground three foot six. So basically what's happening is the frost gets underneath that leg and it's pushing up in the winter time and twisting the only thing holding that whole pier is just that little nailing strip so the whole camps moving with the frost and it settles back in the spring of course no rebar snapped it off so they're just floating so I'll dig that out I mean this shovels I mean minimums five feet for frost in New England. This is only four foot nine. And we're not even not even at that. I'm gonna sink it in at least five and a half feet. The first pier that I dug out, you can see the piss poor quality of the job. Obviously, they didn't have a vibrator or anything to make sure all the concrete got down. But you can see right here and right here, ice and frost can get in there and grab a hold of it and start pushing up because it's not smooth. So I'm going to chuck that in the woods. And... Alright, so I just stuck this back in the hole to show you. This is a six foot sauna tube, so all I did was just stick the sauna tube in there on a footing. And then minimum, minimum code. Frost depth for Vermont for setting a sauna tube. According to Poly Construction, in Vermont, where winters can get brutally cold, our engineers require the footing to be at least 54 inches below grade. In a state like North Carolina, the frost line generally goes about six inches down. All right, so the engineers say minimum of 54 inches. That's four foot six. So that's right here where this line is. They weren't even at the minimum. That's, that's below grade, four foot six. 
So they're a foot shy. They were only about three foot six. We generally go minimum of five feet, but I'm gonna go five and a half. So here's five and a half. So I'm gonna dig this down until this line is down here. And then I'm only gonna have about eight inches of sauna tube sticking out and I'll put a six by six post on there to carry it. And then I'll put braces. But that's a six foot sauna tube. All right, I'm gonna start mixing some concrete. Doing it all by hand. To bump the strength up a little bit, I got a bag of Portland. I'm gonna cut Portland cement in with every bit of it. To increase the strength. Plus, like I said, I'll be putting some rebar, three pieces of rebar in there for sheer strength. Be putting those in. And I'm going to mix it a little wet so I make sure I get a nice solid column and not little pucker marks in there for the frost to grab a hold of in the frost jacket. So I'll get mixing. Stick that tall jack and that cribbing to the right side of that one that I just poured. Because this, this end of the camp is going to come up a little bit. So I'll jack up pressure on that. That way that will be set for cutting my 6x6 tomorrow and putting that in. And then I'll work on digging that one out. Get that one out. That one's kind of critical to make sure it's done right. It's a corner. Carries a lot of load. Alright, so today we're going to tackle, because it's raining out, fixing this wet spot on the floor. All right, now that we got the patch put in, we'll use some of this just to fill the seams and stuff, just so there's no hard edges. And then once we do that, stick the floor back down and then I'll be able to get some cord around. And I'll get like a little threshold for where the carpet goes across, either metal or a piece of, piece of wood, just to hide where the seam is where I put the linoleum back down. put in and put some leveling compound around there so it should hide the seam 
I'll wash up that moldy mess with a little bit of bleach after this dries before I tack it back down. I'll stick it in there and then I'll run cord around and I'll get a little piece of threshold for right there with the carpet and stuff and then another piece of cord around coming down to the door. And then it'll be like nobody was ever in there. And it all started because sometime during the winter, the gasket in the window let go. And the window fell down to about here. It was inside the door. And water was pouring in following the door down, went in the floor. And I had it tarped so it wasn't pouring in, but there was enough to, to leak in there and rot the floor. You know so I cut it back to good wood and patched it in so I get the floor it dried get it tacked back down just put some staples along the edge of the couch for now until I get a piece of quarter quarter round to go right along there and then I'll get a little threshold piece to cover where the carpet and linoleum is because I tacked it down there with staples and then it'll be all all complete but no more rot hopefully the window stays the way it is and don't leak and I wash that back side of that linoleum to get the mold off of bleach kill it all right, so one of the other projects I'm gonna take care of is I put my well tank on an extension cord. So during the winter time, I take it, break it down and I bring it inside. I got a union on that side on the water line coming in. And then I got two unions here. I just disconnect it, drain, well, drain the whole system, disconnect it. And I take it inside because the first year I didn't, you can see the bottom of the base here. And those light blue marks are the frost heaved and pushed it up into the floor joist. And you can see the little kiss mark on the right hand side. I grabbed the floor joist. So to avoid that, now I take it inside for the winter. I drain it because I don't run the water because obviously it freezes. I don't have a basement. So I'm going to put some spade bits on here when i was here last time i thought i had some here but didn't i just put the stranded wire wrapped it around the nuts and it works but i'm gonna neaten it up put the spade bits on it so that goes to show you how much the frost in new england heaves where it pushed that all the way up in there and crushed it all right you can see i wrapped that project up neaten it up I want to make sure I do stuff so it's not all hacked up in case something happens to me and my wife has to sell this place. I bought it more or less as an investment. Like I said, as you can see, that pier, there's weight on it, but it snapped right off because it didn't go in far enough. That one there is cracked. You can see right at the ground level. There's a line going across it. That one snapped. And that one's busted right off. They put a piece of wood on it. So that's what drove most people away from buying this place. Was as soon as they saw those foundation issues, they just backed away. But I knew with a little bit of work that I could fix it up. I mean, I could hire somebody to come take care of it. But I'll do it myself. Take me a little time.
by little we're getting now. Got just that one front one on this side left to dig out. Got that one poured last night. I'm gonna give it a few days to cure before I put the plate on there and then I'll put a temporary post on it. I'll jack the camp up a little beyond level. Put the temporary post in and let the, all the weight rest on it, pushing down, seat the post. I'll jack it up and then I'll uh, cut the permanent post. Yeah, here's another one, not even a foot down. Snapped off. But got all the other ones done. This is the last one on this side. I just got to cut the post for the for that one there. We got this side done. Still got to cut the braces, but all the posts are done on this one. So I got all the braces done on this side. Raining out so I can't really dig that other pier. I may start working on the one that's underneath. Be out of the weather and have to move the cribbing. Was hoping to get these two done, but keep getting downpours on and off and I started to dig a little bit. I don't know if I dig that out, it's just gonna be a big soup hole. Tonight's meal, I'm gonna have some bear steaks and some wild boar uh, kibasa from the pig hunt down in North Carolina. All right, here's yet another one. Out. I'm sitting on my butt. Here's my knee, my foot. This is how far down it is. And you can see it move and it snaps right off the base. Of it. Right under it. Not even, it's not even three feet in the ground. There it is, just dangling there now. And the base is right here. And there's a, there's a plastic footer right there at the end of the shovel. Not even hitting this that hard. So that was the last pier they dug out. It broke off from the foot. And there's all the pieces. And there's the top part down there in the woods. And I dug down another two feet beyond where those were. 
I'll get this one toward. Get that one poured. We got quite a few more to go. Can't figure out for the life of me how this camp hasn't fallen over. It's another one barely a foot. Another one sheared off in a couple different places. That one's broke off a couple feet down. Another one where the concrete just junk. Alright, got another one backfilled. Just start mixing some concrete. String don't lie. jack it up just a hair more in the back but I got it on cribbing so once you jack it it kind of settles in the ground a little bit but once I get that poured I'll do like I did here I'll cut a temporary post once it's cured and I'll put weight on it so the pier settles out you know I'll put quite a bit of pressure on it before I cut the actual post that's going to be there permanent Packing up. I'm gonna run to the lumber yard real quick. I got that one back here poured. Same thing, gonna give it a couple days to cure. Once that one's done, I'll cut those two posts and put them in. Like I said, I got that temporary post. I got some weight resting on there to seat it. That one's been poured since the last time I was here. So I probably could have cut the post this time, but I'm going to wait. Once I get those two in, I'll dig that one out and that one out. So I haven't dug one of these out yet. That hasn't been broken. Guess I'm going to have to jack this up. Oh, there's another one that was snapped off right at grade. So here's the uh, one footer. I don't know if they just got a bad batch of concrete. Concrete shouldn't come apart like that. Play it. On this side. I got a bunch of old used cross arms and stuff. So instead of using pressure treated on this side, I'm just going to use those pieces of cribbing and stuff that I, I got cut, saved, and I'll just use those, cutting the braces like that. All right, so I'm back up to finish the last ones. I got that post I just cut. I'm gonna stick that in. I got two more to cut and put in, and I got one pier left. That one right up there in the front. Once I dig that one out and pull it out, I just gotta pour it, and I'll have to wait at least a week or so before I can get back and cut the last post. But those ones are set up, so I just got to put the post plates on, put the posts in. The concrete graveyard. All the busted posts. So 
So I'm gonna have a guy come, I was gonna run a machine, he's gonna dig a hole over there and bury all the concrete. So I don't have to look at it. But that's the plan for today. Those posts cut and get that last one dug out and poured. I'm about to pull the last pier out from underneath the camp. I've got to say, it's a bittersweet end of this job. It's not fun digging out underneath. There it is, the last one. The only three that weren't broken. And they were all in the ground barely. Three feet, not even. Pretty nasty looking concrete. But those three are the only ones that weren't broken, but of course those ones were in the ground only a few feet, so they were the main culprits drug it out from underneath there's a hole now I gotta dig down the rest of the way and put my sauna tube in fill it and then I'll wait a week or two and come back and put the last post in and I'll be done all right so getting ready to go down and pull the jacks put the final Timber lock screws in the last post. Dug a new trench around. Going down the drip line here. Get the pipe coming out there up through there we we'll get this pipe it's a couple feet short and just use a piece of PVC to lengthen it and then buried all those concrete piers so this is the last post under here to just gotta let the jacks down and 
screw that post in and this saga is over long overdue I also took down the trees on the side of the camper ripped the stumps out leveled up all around there's another stump that was behind it dug a hole buried the stumps leveled up around the well where the well settled after it dug it till the next trip all my youtube friends if you like what you see give me a thumbs up and subscribe